Well, hello, good people. Today, I want to talk about which flux models you can use in WebUI Forge, and specifically for those of you with lower end GPUs like me. Now, jumping right into it, you're going to see here that there's a little breakdown on the various models available. We're only going to focus on the dev model today. The biggest model available is the FP16. This is the one where you can get the best quality from. However, you see the size is 24 gigabytes. So for those of you that have lower end GPUs, it could be a challenge to run this. So if you got a 3090, 4090, this is the model you want to use. The other option available that's only 17 gigabytes is the FP8 version. Then there is also the NF4 V2 version, which is only 12 gigabytes. And not too long ago, there were some GGUF models released, which can be between four to 12 gigabytes. And we'll talk about the differences in the GGUF version compared to the others. But generally speaking, this is a file format that is widely used with large language models. Now, before we do some comparisons, I did want to talk shortly about the GGUF models. And basically, they range from 12 to 4 gigabytes. These are quantized models. Generally speaking, the lower the Q number, the less detail you're going to have. And these models aren't necessarily faster. But these lower end ones can help with GPUs that are like 8 gigabytes or less. Should you use these GGUF models, you do have to load the VAE, the text encoders, and the clip encoders. Now just a quick note in terms of the differences between the GGUF models, I'm going to leave a link in the Google Doc on this Reddit post that was done by Lucky Nada. And he put a side-by-side -side comparison here. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can see from Q4 to Q8, he compares them side-by-side. -side, and you'll be able to see the differences in the quantized models here. So I encourage you to take a look at these. Now, the good thing about WebUI Forge is you can offload the model to go into RAM and system RAM. So if you have an 8 gigabyte card, as I mentioned, you can run the Q8 version. Even though it's 12 gigabytes, it'll offload some of of it to system RAM. But if you got six gigabytes or less on your GPU, you can experiment with the lower quantized files that are lower in file size. As you see here, the Q2 is only four gigabytes. Obviously the quality and detail won't be as good, but from my test, the Q4 does pretty well. Eventually I'll do an in-depth look at the differences between these. And the way I have it set up in WebUI Forge is I'm using QSwap method. You can try async just to speed it up a little bit, but it's currently unstable for me anyways. And then you switch this to shared and enter your GPU weight. So if I'm running this Q8 model, I find 6026 works well, but the swapping method allows you to run those other GGUF models. And as I said before, with an eight gigabyte VRAM card, I can run the FP8 model with this setting and also the quantized Q8, I can run it no problem. Now, if we're talking about inference speed, the amount of time it takes to generate the image, this is based off my system, Ryzen 5800X, 3060Ti, 8 gigabytes of VRAM, 32 gigabytes of system RAM. So at a size of 832 by 1152, 20 steps using Euler. For the Q8 version, I'm averaging about a minute and seven seconds. The FP8, 59 seconds. The NF4, 53 seconds. So if we're talking about quality and speed, the Q8 version is going to be the closest to the original FP16 model, followed by the FP8 and then the NF4. If we're talking about speed, generally the NF4 is going to be faster, followed by the FP8 than the Q8, as we saw in the previous slide. Now, a couple things to consider if you have a 3000 to 4000 NVIDIA series GPU, you can run the GGUF FP8 NF4. And if you've got a 3090, 4090, you may as well run the FP16 one. For NVIDIA cards that are 1000, 2000 series, you can run the GGUF or FP8. Some other things to consider is that current low work with GGUF and FP8 models. Some of them work with NF4 and from my personal test this rings true. Some LoRa's will work the NF4. You may have to crank up the 
wait to get it to work, but currently it's still experimental. I did talk about this already. The Q8 is closest to FP16 versus FP8, and the GGUF models require the text encoder in VAE, and I'll show you that within Forge in just a second. And then finally, the FP8 and NF4 models have the text encoder in VAE included, so those don't have to be loaded separately. So within Forge, you would take your FP8 model or NF4 model and you can load it separately without the VAE text encoder. However, if you're using the GGUF model, you'll have to go into here and load the VAE. You can select the text encoder and then we're going to select the clip encoder. This just looks stretched because I've zoomed into the browser, but this is how you would run the GGUF model. Now just keep in mind the initial generation is going to take a lot longer through this process, but if you're running the all-in-ones like the FP8 or the NF4, there's no need to load the text encoders. As mentioned, they're already included. And just in case you don't know for whatever reason, you'd have to put the text encoders under your models folder in WebUI Forge, under the text encoder folder, and for your VAE, you would place it in your VAE folder. And then obviously your models, you'll put into wherever your checkpoints are. The default one is in the stable diffusion folder. I've got mine on a separate SSD hard drive. Now in terms of quality and details, you are going to get slight differences between the two. But you see here the Q8 and FP8 are quite similar, even though the pose of the head is slightly off. Even the NF4 in this example is very comparable and typically it comes down to the smaller details. So if you look at the brim of the hat here, very different results. As mentioned, the position of the head is different, the teeth are different. So the variance between the versions of the models are very slight and generally it's going to come down to your system and what's best to run. Now sometimes you will get more of a variance. You see here the FP8 one versus the Q8 and NF4 looks very different between the two in terms of the composition, even the face of the guy. And yes, I use the same seed, exact same settings. And sometimes that happens with the NF4 too. So it's not always going to be exactly the same. It really depends on the image you're doing. In this example, it's really hard to see the small differences. We look at the background here, the mountain here looks different. This part of the arrow looks a lot more similar between NF4 and Q8. But generally speaking, in terms of composition, they're very, very similar. In this example, I prefer the FP8 version in terms of the rust of the car. It has an additional antenna here, which is kind of strange. But again, very, very similar results. We have some details at the top of the car that the other two don't have. In this example, we see the patterns are very different between the three. Even the eye details are slightly different. But in terms of quality, if I'm being honest, it's really hard to decipher between the three. So ultimately it comes down to your system and what's more important to you, quality of the image versus speed. Sometimes what I like to do is start with the NF4 just for the speed. And if there's an image that I really like, I'll use the Q8 version. So whenever there's support for WebUI Forge and control nets for Flux, using NF4 or even the GGUF models may help later because of the smaller file size. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about hyperloras that are available for the dev model as well as Schnell and merged models. And generally speaking, the benefit of running these models is that you can generate them with only four to eight steps which obviously will take less time. Now, if you're just starting out with WebUI Forge and Flux, make sure to check out any one of these videos. Until that next one, I'll see you when I see you.